I just want everything to just be like... I was looking through my eye. I tried to time it up when that eye opened. I've been sitting here for two hours trying to set this frame up. Let's hope that works. This is the last time for a little while that I will be filming in this location. Maybe that's why it's taken me so long to set this up, but it also made me think about how many years I've been in this room and have had a camera in every single position that it could ever be. Every focal length, every height, everywhere that a camera could be in here, it's been. If I'm ever in a scenario that's shaped like this, how do I film it? How do I frame it up? What do I do? And that is what I wanna talk about today. So this is one thing that I find at times to be harder than lighting. What's happening in the room? Let's say that it's an intense movie because that's what I like. It's in the beginning of the movie, so something very basic right off the bat is moving from left to right. That signifies forward motion. So I come out, I walk from left to right. We don't really know where we are and we don't know where I'm going. I don't know if this is a good shot or not, and it totally depends on what we're shooting, but that's why I do these tests to try to figure it out. Where is the camera and what lens is on the camera? What do we want the feeling to be? The idea of taking a photograph. That is something that I have said to myself over the years that helps me figure out where to put the camera. This is not necessarily a photograph that I would hang on my wall. So we're gonna reevaluate and go with that approach. I'm gonna walk around the room with a director's viewfinder and try to find something. Forget about the walking from left to right. Forget about what he's doing. Just focus on taking a photograph. Okay, so Cadridge did actually email me back, but I had already shot the video. They did offer some money, but I decided against taking it. And in the end, I was probably gonna mention their app anyway. I love the app. I use it on every shoot I go on. I did not accept any money from them, so they don't really have anything to do with this video, but it is cool that they were open to investing something towards it. Uh, anyways, back to the video. I am in CAD rage right now. I am going to put in my camera, the shooting mode, what my final aspect ratio will be, my recorded area, my extraction, and my frame line is in red. I just like the 80% on there for what I'm doing right now. So I'm gonna turn on the shading to 100. So this is an amazing feature that you can get like any scenario that you could imagine in your camera on here. I'm gonna put the 40, 50, 65, and 100 Atlas lenses in here, and I'm gonna hit done. So we have this frame right here, and it's a complete mess in here. I have done a lot of stuff where I've been talking to the camera right here for YouTube. That could be a contender. The point here is though, I can so quickly move around the room, change to different lenses, and see what things are looking like. In all of these scenarios, I'm imagining, imagining myself in the center of the frame. Let's say I don't wanna see the edges of the wall, I want the curtains to be in the full frame, but I want the camera. Also, this is Bamante's. Great, great restaurant. Okay, this might be cool. Let's see what the 50 looks like. The 50 or the 40 might work here. I'm gonna go as close to the wall as possible, move to a 50. I think the 50 is the move here. 65 is too much. And then I'm gonna shift over to the right to see what it looks like without that wall. Maybe here is the shot. I think this will work. We could clean up the kitchen a little bit and have the lens wide open to have the background be blurred and see how that looks. 
Okay, so we matched up what we took in the app and I think that this is an acceptable portrait. I did this on the film that I've been mentioning in the last couple of videos that I shot with Simon Vedas. And this is one of the first frames that I took in the room before the shoot when we were planning things out. This one frame makes me have the confidence to say, this film is gonna look amazing. I want the rest of the film to feel like how this feels and be in this world. That's the same thing that I'm doing here right now. I like this shot right here and walking around with the app was way easier than walking around with this heavy setup where I have to worry about focus, changing lenses and camera batteries. So I could just do it on my phone, do it quick, and now we have something that makes me feel good and gives the confidence to move forward in this room for the rest of the shoot. So here's the portrait. These outlets maybe need to go. Honestly, this microwave could go. This gear on the wall right here maybe should go. Thinking about removing these, especially if it's a shot on sticks, something that I can do fairly easily. And we can see what those look like removed and with the microwave removed and we have a portrait that is an indicator that we can move forward and have good looking framing and it gets your head in the right space to keep pushing. Even this helps for other kitchens that I might be in. Oh yeah, I remember that one time I got that shot of me on an iPad or on my phone in front of the kitchen. That was on this lens at this aperture and not that we're really talking about lighting right now, but the lighting was coming in from the side. I can apply this to other kitchens. I uh, have something in my arsenal for shooting a scene that might happen in a kitchen or with the kitchen in the background. The second you put something in front of a background, it becomes more interesting. A white wall doesn't look like anything but a white wall until you put something in front of it. It's a combination of having in your head what you can put into the frame, what you can remove from the frame, what you can remove from the frame in post, and what works for your stories. Let's at least put a tighter lens on this right here and see what this shot looks like. Man, it's hard to do this alone. My assistant is upstairs having Aperol spritzes and not helping me with the YouTube channel. Get in focus. I like this more confidence moving forward in this room that we can make some good looking stuff. Do also need a haircut. You can put the rule of thirds on your monitor. I don't do that because I don't like looking at a screen with stuff over the image. And eventually you should just kind of know this is wrong. This looks better. Am I on the rule of thirds? Maybe I'm close. Earlier in my career, I had pressure on me to be able to know when I step in a room how to shoot it. You can't spend too much time trying to figure it out. Production costs a lot of money per day and you can't waste time trying to figure out what to do. That's why I run camera tests. I love arriving to set knowing exactly what I'm gonna do. It makes the whole experience more fun, it makes the final product better and reduces stress. Yo, what up? Yeah, I'm, I'm filming if you dial back on all distractions and you walk into a room and you first look around the room with your eyes and then bring out the viewfinder and then bring out the camera, you should be setting yourself up for success. The more that I reduce all distractions and the less I can walk around with is when I find the frames that work for me. Take that photograph, bring in the footage from that photograph into the Resolve, export out a frame and have it on your phone so that you're living within the world that you created in the beginning, that you really like the look of, that can uh, continue to drive the creative efforts of the project that you are filming. All right, that's it. Let me know if you have any questions. Peace. Okay, I didn't really leave. I just need to turn off the camera.